So we're now talking about the effects of anxiety on the body. Now, as we mentioned earlier on, your body is, is one of the most phenomenal machines, most ph phenomenal computers in existence. OK, if you imagine it as a computer, your brain being the central hub, the motherboard is responsible for doing so many different tasks. If you don't deal with things, remember we talked about the ostrich sticking its head in the ground because, again, it doesn't want to deal with anxiety, doesn't want to have to face it, doesn't want to have to acknowledge what's going on because everything's been normalized. Then what happens is it spreads to the body. And anxiety is just one of the ones that we're going to be talking about in this series, because what happens is anxiety floods your body with acid. OK, and anxiety, they did an experiment in the United States. And I forget which university it was, but they experimented with water under different conditions. So literally what I have here in this mug um, and they did it under different conditions. And you might have anxiety that's, you know, played, you know, nice, smooth jazz and it's all good and happy and la, 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 la. They also had anxiety being screamed at. Also, they had water being screamed at. They also had water being uh, su subject to fear, you know, to, to fear, to horror, to joy, to stimulus, all that kind of stuff. And what they did was to photograph the ways that the cellular structure of water, the atomic structure of water changed. And you can go online, you can see us, it's absolutely fascinating. And water literally would, you know, exhibit happy <laughs> sort, of, sort of patterns. I know it sounds really crazy, but it happened. It would exhibit happy sort of things with, with, with the happy music and, and everything going on, but it also would change massively when it was exposed to fear and horror and anger and, and all of the negative emotions. And that's what's happening in your body. So it starts here, because again, the antithesis of everything, as Emerson said, is a thought, okay? So it starts here, it floods on down through your body, which leads to an action. But if you don't deal with something like anxiety and it's chronic anxiety, it will then begin to attack the weakest parts of your body. If you're someone like me, for example, it attacks your stomach. In most people's case, it will attack their back, their knees, their joints. And if it sits there long enough, it can actually burn a hole through you. Now, why on earth should you be worried about that? Well, because again, if something like anxiety has been normalized, then you probably want to be concerned about somebody saying, well, you know, this could burn a hole through you and it's going to cause major effects. Now, you've heard the phrase before, you can worry yourself to death, right? You literally can. I am living testimony of this. When we started doing uh, the Mind, Body and Soul podcast probably about four years ago and I was interviewing people, and I remember, you know, interviewing sometimes 10 people in a week. It was busy, 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 busy. And I would get myself more and more and more stressed. And I'd be painting and I'd be doing this, and I'd be doing that. And I'd be flying around all over the place. And what I ended up doing was tearing my midsection just from under my, my breastbone right down to my navel and around my back. It was excruciatingly painful to the point, I think I only slept 14 hours in about six months. That is no word of a lie. My wife will attest to that. So you can literally worry yourself to death. The other effects that it has on your body is the aging process. If you can't get anxiety under control and recognize, hey, I'm causing this because I'm responding to situations that have happened before and people tell you around, it's normal, it's normal, it's normal to feel like this. It is not normal. But people, some of the worst things you can do is listen to people. <laughs> it really is. Because you don't want to make you feel bad, but ultimately, if something's normalized, you don't have to do anything about it. So if you don't have to do anything about it, you can literally sit there and be like, well, I've got anxiety and it's normal. It's not normal. How do I know it's not normal? Because you don't arrive on this planet with anxiety. You know, if you were, if, if it was normal, every single person in this planet or on this planet would have anxiety. OK, if it was normal, every single person on this planet would have anxiety. Every single person on this planet would have addiction issues or PTSD or bipolar. We have to stop normalizing things that are not normal. Back to the point that if you don't deal with things when they are small to deal with. Remember the whole phrase prevention is better than the cure. If you don't deal with things when it's a small thing, like a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of anxiety is not going to cause you much harm. But if it becomes this full-blown thing, then it's going to cause you major harm. 
In my book, The Battles We All Face, we talk about this. And I've got a whole chart that goes from top to bottom. And, and, and the bottom is like, you feel really good, you're really powerful, you're really positive. You know, a little bit up further is, is, well, you feel maybe less positive, you know, sort of a little bit anxious, a little bit frustrated, a little bit wound up. And it goes from little bits to you feel thoroughly peed off, you want to rip the place apart. But then it gets even worse. It's like you're so angry, you're you're seeing red, you're blind with anger, you're frustrated, everything on you hurts, everything on you is tired, every mood is negative. And that's naturally brown because I couldn't think of another thing that was there. Um, but it's it's so important that you become aware of you. Because once you become aware of you, you become aware that you can actually change what it is that you're feeling, what it is that you're doing. You can't control the world around you. OK, you really can't. You can't control the wars that are going on. You can't control the fighting that's going on. You can't control the arguments and other people, but you can control how you respond. People say to me in session, John, I don't think I can control how I respond. And I said, if I slapped you in the face, could you control how you respond? They said, no, I'd slap you back. I said, but could you if you really wanted to, if you hadn't been conditioned, could you control how you felt? It's like if I said I love you. You you control how you respond to that. You either go, Ugh, or you go, Ooh, or you go, that's nice, or you go, oh, that's so sweet. Equally, if I said, I hate your guts, I never want to see you again. Some of you might be like, yes. Other, <laughs> others of you might be like, wow, that sucks. Others may be like, wow, he sucks. You control. So you've got three different responses there. And we do this with patients all the time and, and, and clients, especially in the practice, where I will say, right, if you don't believe that I can control how you feel, but more specifically, you control how you feel, then here's what happens. OK. So. I start by doing two minutes of negative stuff. You're useless. You're worthless. You're pathetic. You're 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 unloved. You're uncared about. You're you, nobody could bother about you. No one could care about you. No one could like you. And they get really down. They get really you know, slumped over, and it's really miserable. But then I say, okay, now we're going to energize you. Now we're going to make you feel emotional. I want you to know you're amazing that you're passionate, you're a divine being having a temporary human experience, that you are worthy, that you are something incredible, that you are something loved, that you are someone loved, you are someone worthy, that God Almighty himself was so in love with you that he put you here on the planet, that you are not this worthless being that you've been told you are, that you are actually something that really, really matters, and you have the ability in you to change the world one mind at a time. See how I talk, see even how I'm delivering things that are different there. You can see the difference straight away. People become enthused, they become amazing. You know, you're loved, you're beautiful, you're passionate, you're, you're energetic, you're strong. What does that mean? It means that any moment you can control how you feel. And if you, if you can control how you feel just by changing your mental state by what you focus on, then it means you can actually control anxiety. When you have full-blown anxiety attacks, it comes because you have ignored the warning signals. And when you ignore the warning signals, you're gonna get major pain.